G'day. Two and a half years ago, I made a video where I made some oxalic acid extended release strips. That video has been quite popular. I re-watched it a couple of days ago and realized that it's quite out of date. This is an update. As you would expect, I'm constantly trying new things, trying out different methods, seeing what works best, and the way that I make the oxalic acid strips has changed significantly. So what I'm going to do in this video is go from beginning to end, making the strips and putting them in hives. In that last video, I made a small batch enough to produce 60 or 70 strips, and the recipe back then was 500 grams of oxalic acid and 750 milliliters of glycerin. In this video, I'm using the exact same recipe, but I'm doing a batch which is six times bigger. The first step is to pour out the glycerin. So six times 750 milliliters is three liters. So I'll just pour that into a jug and sit it to one side ready to use when I need it. Another big difference between the way that I used to do it and the way that I do it now is that I actually mix more of the oxalic acid glycerin liquid than I need for the batch that I'm making. That means that at the end of each batch I have some left over which I simply pour into my pot and then add the right ratios of mixture in on top. So I've poured in what was left over from the previous batch. I'm now putting the glycerin in. That goes on the heat on that little electric element turned up full bore. And if I poke the camera down in there, you can see what's going on inside. Just glycerin and a little bit of oxalic acid from the last batch. The next step is to measure out the oxalic acid. Now, I have a slight problem in that the little set of scales that I'm using for this exercise only go to two kilos. In the previous version of the video where I was making a small batch, I was using 500 grams. In this version, because I'm doing six times the dose, I'm putting three kilos. So that is two kilos, and then obviously I've got to measure out another kilo to top it up. I wait until the glycerin has reached 70 degrees before I add the oxalic acid. Once that's in the pot, it's reasonably important to give it a good stir. Although I find that it doesn't pay to get carried away trying to get rid of every single lump right at the start of the process because once the glycerin heats right up, those lumps break down much more easily. All I'm doing here is stirring it up a little bit to make sure that the uh, oxalic acid is reasonably evenly distributed amongst the glycerin. After I add the oxalic acid powder, I just do a quick check of the temperature. In this particular case, it had dropped from 70 degrees down to 47 degrees. So I now have to let it come back up to 70 degrees. You can see that I've made a little jig to sit my cardboard strips in. That jig is a copy of the commercial one that you can buy from Bequip. It's just an old cutting board with some uh, pieces of old fencing wire cut to length and poked, heated up and poked down into holes. Its purpose is to keep the strips sitting vertical and separated slightly so that the oxalic acid liquid can flow all the way through the strips and soak in from all sides. You have to be aware, as you'll see at the end, that as these cardboard strips absorb the oxalic acid mixture, they expand significantly. So you have to set it up in a way that they can rise up. When the strips come, they're packed in bundles of about 100 strips. What I'm doing here, because I don't need 
There are seven slots there. If I put 100 strips in each one, that will be 700. I don't need 700 strips right at the moment. So I'm breaking those bundles in half, roughly, and spreading them out across the slots. You'll see as I get towards the end that I have a little bit of a play around to even the piles up because I'd like the top to be as uniform as possible so that when I sit boards on top of it, it holds all of the strips down evenly. That's reached 62 degrees centigrade. I'm waiting until it hits 70. While well, I'm waiting for that to heat up, last little bit. While I'm waiting for that to heat up the last little bit, I'm just going to talk to you about health and safety. In pre previous videos, I've stressed that you need to wear a proper respirator mask, and I still recommend that you wear a respirator mask. In fact, I no longer wear a respirator mask, but I've got a setup here where I'm in a sh an open air shed. There's a door open at that end, a door open at that end, and the air moves through. I've got a fan here blowing. I've got the hot plate setting set there so that if I inadvertently drop any mixture onto the hot plate and it sublimates or vaporizes, the gas is going to go that way. It's actually the same principle that laboratories use when they use a uh, chamber with a airflow going through it to suck noxious fumes away. Just because I'm not using a mask doesn't mean that you shouldn't. I don't want to be responsible for you injuring your lungs. I'm happy to take a risk with my lungs, but I wouldn't recommend you taking a risk with your lungs. I'm wearing gloves. In fact, I'm happy to handle the extended release strips after they've been soaked in oxalic acid with my bare hands. I, of course, I have to wash my hands afterwards, but it doesn't cause any ill effects. I wear gloves at this point because the strips that I'm going to be turning around inside the hot mixture are going to be hot. I want to talk about the risks associated with heating oxalic acid to 70 degrees. I've had some significant debate with some people who are adamant that 70 degrees is too hot and that it should be 60 degrees. I've done the research. Oxalic acid doesn't sublimate or vaporize into gas until it reaches 157 degrees centigrade. That's 315 degrees Fahrenheit. At 190 degrees centigrade, or 375 degrees Fahrenheit, any unvaporized oxalic acid can turn to formic acid. There's no risk of either of those things happening in this process, except if I drip some mixture onto the hot element. Raising it to 70 degrees makes it dissolve better, makes the oxalic acid dissolve into the glycerin better, and that makes a better brew as far as I'm concerned. If you want to do it at 60 degrees, feel free. Many people say they do it and it works fine. Right, 71 degrees. So the first step is to turn the fan on, then I'll go and open up the door to get that airflow and then I very very carefully pour. Now I just want you to take note of the fumes that are coming off the element as I pour. I didn't see that until I edited this video. I didn't see it and I wasn't aware of it because I didn't smell it. I didn't smell it because the fan and the open doors are doing their job. Then I grab my blocks of wood and sit them on top. To tell the truth, off camera, I found that that amount of wood sitting on top of that number of strips was insufficient and the strips were still floating up so I actually grabbed a couple of old metal barbell weights and set them on top for the night. So now it's the next day. I don't need all of these strips right now, 
I need about half of them. The rest I'm going to leave sitting in, hello, there's the dog. Then I'm, the rest I'm going to leave sitting in the oxalic acid liquid that remains. As you can see, there's still a lot of liquid around the strips and I'm just allowing most of it to drain back in. Then I'm sitting the strips in the bucket. I will get some of that liquid accumulating in the bottom of the bucket and I will simply pour that back into the container before I take the strips away and use them. I put about 350 strips into that mix and that was about half of them. And now it's time to put them into a hive. This is a small hive that came about because the hive to the left of it had two queens in it. They were two virgin queens and they both mated. And so when I found the two queens, I shifted one across to the hive next door and both hives are thriving. So inserting these strips is a piece of cake. They come with little creases in them so that when you fold them, they uh, naturally bend in the right place. And because they're quite narrow, the, it's quite easy to find a place to slide them down in between the frames. And as you can see, it's only going to take me uh, probably about a minute. I haven't timed it, but it's, it's quick. It doesn't take long at all to slip these strips into the hive. Now I'm doing a separate video, I have done mic tests on all of these six hives in a row, this is one of them, and then I've put three different kinds of strips in, the cardboard, the jib tape, and some Swedish sponge strips, and I will issue another video where I go back through after those strips have been in there for seven or eight weeks, and I will do a mic test on every single one, and put that into a video so you can see. What I can tell you now, without any doubt in my mind, is that oxalic acid extended release kills mites. It kills mites, it keeps the mite levels down. The only last thing I need to talk about before I wrap this video up is that these strips went in in February. In April or May, I'll put a fresh dose in and then September or October, I'll put another fresh dose in. So I put, my, I put strips in the hives three times a year. Of course, we're in the Southern Hemisphere here, so those dates I've just quoted will be, uh, it'll all be six months out of kilter to the Northern Hemisphere. So to simplify it, I put these strips into my hives in the spring, in the midsummer, just as I'm starting to put honey supers on, and in the autumn. Of course, oxalic acid is fine to be in the hives while your hives are gathering honey during the honey flow. Some people advocate putting the strips in even more often than that. I find that three times a year keeps my mite levels low all year round. What I used to do, as I've said in previous videos, is I used to do spring and autumn the way you would with chemical strips. What I found was that between spring and autumn, the mites have time to grow in numbers significantly, which means that when you put your autumn treatment in, that treatment has a lot of mites to knock down and that hive already has a significant amount of mite damage in it. And the three treatments eliminates that and keeps the hives much healthier. Well, that's the latest on extended release oxalic acid strips from me. Thanks for watching.